Hi YouTube, my name is Lucas Ridley with digitalcreatorschool.com. In this tutorial, I wanna show you how to use a newer rendering node in Arnold called Rounded Corners. And in this, we're gonna actually use a uh, scene file from my How to Animate 3D Logos course, which you can enroll in at digitalcreatorschool.com. And you can have these files to follow along with in this lesson as well. Um, but I think this will apply really well to this project file in particular because there's a lot of overlapping geometry and none of it is beveled edges. And so rounded corners is a quick way um, in the render to round out all the corners as the node <laughs> name implies. Um, but thanks for watching, continue watching and to see the tutorial and I hope to see you in class at digitalcreatorschool.com. Thanks, bye. So the uh, logo we're gonna look at the animation for this example is actually from the class and the one that I use in all my videos. So uh, you can learn how to make this in the course, but we're gonna open up the scene file here and just zoom out to kind of take a look at this other area because I think it's a really good example because there are so many cubes that are um, all together that can be uh, rounded corners uh, pretty easily. So I've taken a quick preview render here uh, so we can see something to compare it with when before we apply the uh, rounded corner. So what you want to do is open up your hypershade with this little teal ball up here, and then you can select the geometry and then map the shader by clicking this little button, and then hit tab in the hypershade and start typing rounded corners. Click that, now we have it, double click it or triple click it, and then we take the out value here, let me just zoom in so you can see it, out value into normal camera. And that's all you need to do. And that is pretty much the whole tutorial. <laughs> so from here on out, I'm just gonna show you all the little details of it. But if that's all you need to know, that's uh, that's it. Um, so let's take a quick render to compare. And you can see really quickly <laughs> the big difference it makes. And let me just take a render region here so we're not waiting for the whole thing to render. Um, so by default, it does uh, round out intersections. So where uh, pieces of geometry are interpenetrating one another, it uh, smooths out those edges as well. It's not just the external, but the kind of concave as well as uh, convex edges, if you will, I guess. So you can see here where they all these start to touch, it kind of blends into one another. And so, to, um, you know, there's also good examples here of like, you know, the limitations of this, it's its kind of meant as like a very subtle effect. It's not meant to just totally round things out in a big way. So you can see like at these uh, corners, it can only do so much, you know. Um, and so it looks sharper at the very corners, which is something that is a limitation. But um, you can control the amount uh, that it's smoothing with the radius here. So let's say, let's half this to 0 0.05 and then take another example. And it might be a little bit better because again, this this node works best when it is uh, just a very subtle usage. So we dialed it back by half, and I think that is a bit of an improvement. You know, when we were looking at this corner here, it's actually a little bit smoother, and that artifact of it being pinched there isn't as pronounced. So to get rid of the um, this kind of blending between pieces, all you have to do is click self only but the issue with that with this example is that um the this is all one piece this is all a uh, mash network uh, from the course so uh we can't do self only with that we would have to have two completely separate separate pieces of geometry so real quickly <clears throat> let me create uh just a cube and i'm going to create a uh, cylinder i'm going to grab both of those from the outliner and I'm gonna to try to pop them over here somewhere so we can see them. Let me just turn off this render view so it's not trying to calculate as we're moving around. So let's move these over here, move them up, and then let's just, uh, let's see, let's get this map back here in the hypershade real quick, click that, and then let's select these from the outliner again and middle mouse drag these on so it has that same exact shader uh, so that these are now do, uh, getting the round um, looks like we need to apply it to the cube as well. So let me just 
just frame up on that and scale it down. So what we should get here is a good example of before and afters. So you can see, you know, imagine trying to model this, this nice blend right here from the cube to the cylinder, that would be a real pain to model. So, you know, if this, if this is like from a further camera out, um, it's kind of a nice little highlight here, but as soon as you get a little closer, you can start to see our artifacts and limitations of this. Whereas, you know, these, um, edges are nice and rounded. Um, but there starts to be a little bit of artifacting here where you can see the shadow is a little harder than it should be. If that's actually a rounded corner, we should see a bit of a smoothing here. And maybe that's something that they'll improve in uh, new versions of Arnold. Um, but right now that's, that's one limitation of this, but I mean, for what it is in one node, you get quite a lot. So let's turn off self only real quick. Let's just save a snapshot of that. Make sure it did it. Yep, snapshot it. And then let's just go over here, click the rounded corners, turn off self only, and then let's take a look. It's pretty uh, straightforward. You can see the hard edges now and the big difference that makes from the um, uh, where two pieces of geometry are intersecting one another. That's what we're seeing here. We can see everything else is still working. All the rounded corners are still working, um, except for where two pieces of geometry intersect. So if we just take a snapshot of that and we toggle back and forth, you can see the big difference right there. So that those are the two main things I would adjust whenever using this node. Um, the last one being samples, you can you can bump it up a little bit. It doesn't take that much to kind of resolve any uh, little bit of noise there. So those are the main attributes of it. Uh, I think it's a really interesting node. Um, there are a few limitations that we covered, but it's pretty quick and easy. And thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe uh, if you want to see more YouTube videos like this. And uh, if you want to learn more about Maya and digital art in general, I share all my experience from working on major motion picture movies like Avengers and Transformers and um, all kinds of good stuff. I'm, I'm working on a, a course right now about how to break into the animation industry where I interview seven industry pro professionals, um, all from varying backgrounds, including my own. And it's looking to be like a pretty big course right now. And so I share a lot of insight and um, things that aren't shared in class. You won't find this at a school. Uh, you won't find this in a textbook. This is real world experience that I wish I had known about. So if you want to take that class and more, uh, definitely become a member at digitalcreatorschool.com. If you become a member, you get access to that class and every single class I make as long as you're a member. Um, so right now that's currently over 50 hours of training. So um, it's, it's a pretty good deal because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I've spent 10 years uh, working in the industry and had a, a much more expensive education to um, get all this knowledge so I can share it with you. So I look forward to seeing you over there at digitalcreatorschool.com. Again, my name is Lucas Ridley, and I look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks. Bye.